Hi, I'm Ben Hedges, and welcome to Discovering China. Coming up on this week's show, we take a sneak peek at NTD's upcoming culinary competition, visit an exhibition of Chinese artworks in New York, and check out some ancient Buddhist sculptures in Taiwan. On September 27th and 28th, NTD will be holding its fifth international Chinese culinary competition in Times Square, New York. Now let's take a look at what's to come. This September, Times Square, New York, will be transformed. Come experience the amazing tradition at NTD's fifth annual International Chinese Culinary Competition, where you can taste 5,000 years in a single bite. NTD's fifth annual Chinese culinary competition. Don't miss it. After the first day of the competition, NTD will be holding a charity dinner featuring a contest between five celebrity chefs to cook one of China's most famous dishes. Since time began, great chefs have battled to control the fire of the wok, all to answer the age-old question. Can five celebrity chefs cook authentic Chinese cuisine? Judge Chu Yun Chung, Susie Fogelson, and Chef David Burke will put Chef Malcolm Mitchell, Julieta Ballesteros, Antoine Kaman, Manich Chohan, and Chef Clark Frazier through the fire of the wok in support of NTD's fifth annual Chinese culinary competition. Last weekend, the Art of Jin Shan Ren, or Truthfulness, Compassion and Tolerance exhibition, was held alongside the annual Couture Fashion Week at New York's famous Waldorf Astoria Hotel. Margaret Chai takes you on a journey, exploring the art that tells the story of a traditional Chinese spiritual practice. At Manhattan's Waldorf Astoria Hotel last weekend, New York art lovers had a chance to see Chinese oil paintings telling the story of a traditional Chinese spiritual practice. The Art of Zhen Shan Ren, or Truth, Compassion, Tolerance exhibition, tells the story of Falun Gong, an ancient spiritual discipline the Chinese regime has been persecuting since 1999. What we see is this, this depiction of, of the journey of the practice, and uh, it gives you an insight into the, the spiritual world of, of people who practice, and really sort of captures this tranquility and this sort of uh, inner beauty that comes from the practice. The exhibit is organized along seven key themes. These include the coming of the Lord Buddha, joy of cultivation, persecution in China, and the non-violent resistance of Falun Gong practitioners. The paintings explore the artist's inner spiritual experiences, the sublime tranquility, <laughs> contrasted against the harsh outer truth of the persecution in mainland China. Zhen Shanren Art Exhibition Coordinator James Smith talks about how the project first started. Uh, the, the main artist, uh, the director of the project, Professor Zhang Kunlun, uh, it very much shows the transformation of, of, of himself as he came to practice in Falun Gong and really shows the, the beauty, particularly in, in the, the Buddha, which you'll see sort of at the end. And in, so he was then put into a labor camp and tortured, so the Canadian government uh, rescued him from, um, from China, and now he's come, he's brought this collection of uh, art, this group of artists together to, to tell the story in, in places like this. The artists have created the exhibit as a medium to portray the truth. Smith says the painting titled Determination Under Persecution particularly moves him. You know, it could be me, I mean, it could be any of us my age who is caught in this predicament that come across a beautiful practice, have started to do it and learned so much and yet she's been put into a labor camp and sort of subject to this really severe torture. In the Manhattan Meditator, artist Kathleen Gillis shows the everyday experience of a young New York practitioner. This is on the, on the streets of Manhattan, so we have a sidewalk in Manhattan and for a long time 
the practitioners would, would go and meditate and it's a way of letting the public know that this is really a peaceful practice. Chen Shanren, Art International Exhibition Coordinator. William Chung explains the importance for people in the West to see the exhibition. I think nowadays when you heard about China, we all know it's a growing economical power. But we don't, many forget that it's still ruled by a communist regime. Under the dictatorship of regime, actually people don't have the same basic human right that we enjoy from the West. The moral message transcends language, time, race, religion, and politics. One thing in common is humanity. And this is the art that's showcasing the best of humanity and showcasing the courage for people, despite the atrocity, they're up, standing up for their faith and belief and, and their different convictions and always using peaceful means to appeal to the world. Artist Xiaoping Chen depicts the theme of non-violent resistance in a call of innocence. The painting shows an innocent young girl standing dwarfed by the towering Manhattan skyscrapers. It's a rainy day, it's cloudy, but in her eyes you can see her conviction is beyond her age. It's penetrating and she's holding a sign called Killed for the Belief. It's trying to raise awareness about the human rights violation in China. This was a year-round campaign several years ago in Manhattan. The goal is to try to raise awareness in this international city because you know, many visitors, including many Chinese, also coming to the New York City. Chung says the exhibition plays a valuable role in educating the public. Since 2004, the Chen Shanren Art Exhibition has been shown in over 140 cities and more than 40 countries. We now go to southern Taiwan to take a look at Buddhist sculptures from some of China's ancient dynasties. Stone Buddha statues from the Wei, Jin, Northern and Southern dynasties to the Ming and Qing periods stand lifelike, each with a different appearance. As you enter the museum, it's as if you have transcended time and space and are personally experiencing the beauty of Buddhist art from China's different dynasties. The Tang Dynasty was a period of abundance. So, according to the concept of beauty in that period, the Buddha faces were a bit fuller and rounded, whereas the Buddha faces during the Northern and Southern Dynasties period was thinner. Seeing these ancient objects really makes me feel that these collectors, the effort they put in, is no simple thing. It is because of them that we, the later generations can see such great things. The 1000 Buddha pillar from Western China is magnificent and solemn, exhibiting ancient Chinese culture. The whole style of the 1000 Buddha pillar is in the style of the Yungang Buddha caves that is the most famous of the Northern Wei dynasty. In other places you rarely see these cross-legged bodhisattvas and twin-seated Buddhas. It was created by command from the emperor. They created these caves and so the scope is huge. They are very solemn. Normally you wouldn't be able to see these kinds of exhibits unless you visit China. If you go to temples in Taiwan, there is no way to see such big Buddha statues. Here you can also see the events known as the Three Wu and One Zong emperors when Buddhism was attacked. From the repaired remains of Buddha statues, you can see the tragic destruction of Buddhism. The most principal reason for the destruction was a clash of culture and thought, and also the incompatibility of cultural and economic values. In history, after they tried to eliminate Buddhism, their dynasties didn't last long, some only five years, and the longest was only six years. After trying to eliminate Buddhism, you definitely won't meet with a good end. All of the four dynasties who attacked Buddhism finished very quickly. Collectors have opened up their lifetime's private collection, allowing this glorious collection of Buddhist art to be displayed to the public again. Thanks for watching Discovering China. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube and like us on Facebook. We'll be back next Friday with a special episode on NTD's culinary competition. See you soon.